This episode of Twin Humanities is brought to you by Paddy's Head Cold. If you want to play along at home, maybe take a drink every time you hear me cough my guts up. Enjoy the episode. To Twin Humanities, I had to think which show it was there for a minute, <laughs> which we? is uh, the number after the last one, uh, which is, was, what, was 58 the last one or is 58 this one? Uh, I'm going to guess 58 is the recent one. I'm guessing. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Oh, this makes us look really bad. We're not good at this, are we? I know. Doing a bad job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hashtag bonfiresidechat.com. 58. It is 58. I'm it the is 58. man in your face. I just did hashtag and then the dot com. This is this is bad. This might be somebody's first episode. If only we had somebody who was refined and classy, who could also notice a little bit of side boob in a video game every now and again, <laughs> who could who could join us, perhaps bringing a, a voluptuous and hungry audience to our doors. Who could that be? But gadget called Kylie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. This is this is. Um, your first appearance since uh, Oh the Humanities episode six back in May two thousand and fourteen. Wow! Did that's you do some so research? Long ago. I I literally clicked onto our website and then onto what is that website uh, for those listening? What? Well, the best one to go to is Twin Humanities Nexus Tumblr.com, but there is Twin Humanities for only the dog soul stuff. But uh, yeah, I went to Oh the Humanities. And uh, yeah, we had a good old natter with Kylie back. In, it, it seems I don't know. I, when I when I saw the twenty fourteen, I was thinking, have I, have I known you that long? <laughs> yeah, it's really flew by to be honest. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember right, the first point that I said hello to you was um, you had recommended some uh, stickers for the three DS, some Monster Hunter ones. Uh, that went on the front and went on the insides and you also said that the Wii U versions of them were rubbish and I was like thanks for that and then we just got nattering and it was cool yeah <laughs> you're bringing back memories of how frustrating they were to actually apply as well <laughs> yeah they did, well, I, I didn't do too badly with the 3DS ones but I, I would have liked the um, the Wii U ones to be a bit a bit more groovy Oh, my Is... ended ended up with loads of creases in them. So, <laughs> did they? Yeah. Mm. I have a question. Who are you Let people that put right. stickers on your machines? What? I'm not. Oh, I'm not one of those. No, it I'm not hurts one of the, me. I'm not one of those people that um, that puts like you know when people put stickers on laptops and especially uh, expensive stuff like MacBooks. Oh, like, like, like... like wanky ones that make the apple into a shape. I don't know. I, Sorry, I was, every listener who does that, but I think it's shit. <laughs> no, there's a, the, no. I know. I know somebody who's actually really lovely. He's got the, things like that on their machines. It's something that people do. But I, there's part of me that just goes like, which feels very parental. Yeah, I've got an Agumon on the side of my PC tower. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's a, that's a wedge. A wedge between us already. Yeah, yeah. The friendship's uh, off now. <laughs> oh my god. Nah, to be fair, I like Ag- we've got a plush Agamon sitting on our uh, our TV stand, so unfortunately I'm seeing Kylie on this one. I, d- I don't know what a, what an Ag- Agamon is. He he digivolves into Greymon. Yeah. Oh, oh that's clear that up And then into is... into War Greymon. Which is badass. Yeah. It's like this, a dinosaur it... man with like a metal head. Is this Digimon? Breath. Yeah, because <laughs> the the only thing that I know about Digimon, other than Gadget Girl Kylie's play of the recent one on her YouTube channel, plug plug plug, um, was <laughs> that Steve Bloom, who voiced Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, 
was originally that was his first gig and I think he wrote some of the episodes as well some of the western ones okay which is hmm. neither here nor there to most people but that's just one of those rubbish things that stays in the mind so um, we may have covered this in fact we probably did cover this on uh, Other Humanities but it's interesting to get uh, a grounding as to where people came from when they first got uh, got into games so um, was were games big in your house? Were uh, was there anything in particular you were you were fascinated with as a as a kid? Um, to be honest, I mostly started off with handheld gaming because it was quite awkward in my bedroom. I shared it with my sister, and I just had like a tiny little corner, um, so it was just easier to have games on the go and just go off into another room and play them so i mostly played the game boy and game boy color Mm -hmm. um i also played on the sega mega drive with my brother and Mm -hmm. my first main console was the playstation 2 um so yeah that was really fun (laughs) so so which games were you playing on the uh was it the game boy color did you say yeah yeah, which which games were you? Was it was it like a Pokemon thing? Yeah, um, Pokemon games mainly. Um, I think a Harvest Moon game was that Harvest Moon Two or something. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also this really cool game which I can't even remember the name of now. It was like kind of like Pokemon but with dinosaurs, and I can't figure out what it was called. But it was so good, like you got to go through zones and like your dinosaurs grew up and you could train them and then you had to defeat a big dinosaur in the zone and yeah, I just can't remember what it was called, but I'd love to know if anybody knows. <laughs> so a, a, so is it a, a, a sort of definite Pokemon clone at the same time as 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 Pokemon came out? Was was there a cartoon series attached or was it just like somebody just went, you know, a Pokemon dinosaurs, which is fair enough really. I don't think there was any show attached to it or anything. I hadn't heard of it. I just read the back of the box and mm. um, picked it up, basically. So, hmm. So, um, what um, was was PlayStation Two the the first one that you properly fell into, or was that were you going across numerous things with the uh, the Mega Drive with your brother as well, or did you have sort of quite a few Game Boy Color games, or was it just the the, the Pokemon stuff that you mainly fell into? It was so long ago, I'm trying to remember. I think it was mainly Pokemon, and then Mm. um, when I got the Game Boy Advanced, you know, stuff like Mario Kart, things like that. But the PS2 was the one I had the most games for, because Mm. um, I remember first getting it, and I didn't realise that you had to have a memory card, so I got uh, Jack and (laughs) Daxter. The precursor legacy and i had to restart it every day i went back on it and uh one day me and my brother got up really early to play through it and we played through it from like <laughs> eight o'clock in the morning till like half ten at night or something and it was so good because we completed everything in the game and i always remember that it was such a fun experience so um so where did you find uh your individual gaming sort of going from uh from there uh, what do you mean? As in, as in, I know you said that you were that you were playing sort of a, a lot of stuff with you with your brother together. Was there anything that you were obsessed on, sort of individually, or was it mainly kind of a um, a couch co op type thing going forward with with bro? Um, to be honest, like we mostly couch co op N sixty four games and some Sega Mega Drive games, but the PS two, other than Jack and Daxter, was my thing. Okay. Um, because that's when he got into PC gaming and kind of like went off into his room pretty much so <laughs> I broke away and started playing on the PS2 and getting <laughs> RPG games and stuff like that so so was it, so it was it was regular RPGs from from there that kicked in or or was there um was was the PS2 the start of uh the Monster Hunter stuff PS2 was the start of Monster Hunter stuff, but I didn't like it when I first played it. Um, okay. I think I have spoke to you about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Cause... I tried the PS2 Monster Hunter as well. I'm sure I did, and I remember hating it. Yeah, I, I hated it as well, and I think it's because at that time I was more into turn-based RPGs, um, mm. so I couldn't like get used to the way it was and um, things like that. I, I found it really difficult to get into, so... 
I put it put it aside or traded it into game or whatever I did and um, but I knew it was a game that I would like because I was like yes it's got awesome monsters and dragons on it and armor and things because I really like games in a fantasy setting with that you know monsters and mm. stuff like that and, and getting equipment and things so it wasn't until the Wii that I got into Monster Hunter I think I may have found your uh, your Pokemon clone uh, was it called Was it called Dinosaurs R Us? Don't know. I'd have to see some pictures. Yeah, I, I, I just put it out on Twitter, but um, there seems to be uh, a Game Boy Color game that looks looks quite nice actually, but very very uh, Pokemon type stuff. I'll know it if I see it. I'm just going to your Twitter now to have a look. Right, I shall send it on Twitter. Paddy, cover for me. Because uh, the last time that I tried to do something and listen at the same time, I forgot to listen. You did. That was terrible. <laughs> I, I can hear you frantically typing as well. Yeah, I was. I was trying to be uh, a clever doing girl. Your, doing they, your foley. They, yeah, as they as they may well have said on uh, Jurassic Park. Mm. I think that your game was probably called Jurassic Poke because you know Pokemon. Oh, Paddy. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <sighs> No. Is that the episode title? No. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park. That, now you see, that's the sort of pun that that uh, came out frequently on uh, co-op last night when we were all playing on Dark hmm. Souls Three, but would re- probably reflect badly on all of us yeah. if it <laughs> yeah. was an episode title. Would te- yeah, because it would but that's it would why sound it would, work. it would sound like we've all gone back to the era of cavemen and monsters and just. Fucked anything that moved. <laughs> yes, it it's is. A good time. That's, is that the one? Yeah, that's the game. Yeah. Ah, I see. Oh, oh awesome. Us. Good detectiving, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well done on that. I don't even know how you managed to find it. <laughs> well, somebody, uh, Carmen was saying that um, that he thought it was um, Little Masters, which uh, I don't remember, but um, I, we're, really we're interacting. Furiously with interacting there. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurs are us um is a a strange one to type out. Um so there we go. Yes, marvelous. See how things it's a good job we don't have that uh truncate silence thing. Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't just do that. Uh, we just sound really manic when we're going along, we're like, Oh I found this, oh I've got the internet, ha ah, ah. um, <laughs> So but um let us let's fold things back in. Moving so on. uh yeah, uh, YouTube. When did the idea uh, to do YouTube stuff uh, kick in, and um, why? Well, I actually did some videos with an ex-boyfriend of mine on his channel with invisibles and just you know a uh, camera, you know, filming the screen. Not going to mention his channel. Mm-hmm. Not, you know whatever yeah. that was in the past <laughs> but, no, no. <laughs> so after i left uni um i thought well i really want to get back into it it's something i want to do and i was going to get the ps vita and a couple of games and stuff so i thought hmm, hmm i may as well give it a go now because obviously i was going to be looking for a job and i thought well this will give me some structure in the day as well yeah, uh, yeah. you know to get up and do this and make sure i'm still used to the working hours in the day so that was another reason why i got into it and it just became a regular thing of making videos i kind of just fell into that and yeah it was it was pretty fun actually hmm. didn't think i'd get where i am today though <laughs> at all so those early monster hunter videos which were some of the early ones that i saw of yours uh how popular were those from the off or did, did they kind of uh, build every time or just no they were quite popular actually um, I think it's because at the time not many other people were covering the game and because it's quite difficult to record you know the handheld system mm. anyway mm. Um, most people didn't really have the mod for direct capture for it so yeah, you I was send it away be... didn't you yeah yeah I did oh god it's a lot of money and to be honest (laughs) it came back and it wasn't working properly and i've had two of them replaced and you know it's it's a major (laughs) fiasco really to be honest to get it i recorded a video on the video once and all i did was set up a camera and just hold it still and (laughs) it was not very good 
There were a few on uh, classic game room like that where they where they had a camera over somebody holding, um, I think, a DS at the time and looking through the viewfinder as they were playing the game, <clears throat> which, uh, as I as I understood it, wasn't uh, wasn't really very comfortable. Not entirely <laughs> optimal. No. Yeah. Because some... I know that. Mm, go on. I was going to say uh, some people have made some crazy setups to record the PS Vita screen, though, like. Um, I saw one where he was holding the Vita underneath like a glass table and then he had the camera lying flat facing down. So, what? yeah, it was it's weird. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Dedication, though. Yeah, absolutely. Then, like, surely you've got the problem if you move it. It's like, oh. Yeah, it. if you knock the, knock the table or anything, which I had issues because how I recorded my PS Vita before I got direct capture was I had to sit on my hard floor because there's no desk in my bedroom. Like, I didn't know I was going to be doing YouTube, to be fair, uh, mm. for this length of time. So I had to sit on my hard floor, which gave me, like, really, like, sore sides and, and backache and stuff. And yeah, I was yeah. all hunched over. Uh, you know, and then after spending hours doing that, you stand up and it's like crunch on your spine when you're trying to stand up. So yeah, and I'd always knock it as well. So because <laughs> I think the first point where I started um, watching your channel pretty heavily was the Soul Sacrifice Delta stuff. Yeah, that's where because um, Sony really hadn't done any marketing on that whatsoever. Um, most people didn't know what the hell it was and um, the videos were great and uh, that was one of the things that, that tempted me to get a, a Vita in the first place So, Well, weren't you saying that um, it reminded you of Dark Souls quite a bit, Soul Sacrifice? Yeah, there was there was something amidst the, uh, the atmosphere and uh, you had that amazing art book as well that you, that you got which looked incredible and there was there was just something um, of the of the dark fable about it that I really enjoyed, and the way that um, it it sort of mixed in actual fairy tales and you know manipulations and new versions of those characters. I I was uh, was kind of fascinated by that, but um, always really wanted to to get a Vita TV and a, an actual joypad to to play it with rather than on the on the Vita screen. Honestly, have have you got round to that yet? No. no, it's no. it's memory cards. It's memory yeah. cards all the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, because uh, I don't know. I, I I used to have like a pretty decent memory card when I had a Vita. I think I had, may have had like a a thirty two gig, and um, they're, they're still so expensive. And even though I can I can see uh, Vita TVs going for like twenty five quid now, um, and uh, DualShock Fours are still a, you can get them for about around about thirty three quid maybe. Mm. Like the the memory cards still just astonishing. I think that's the that's the barrier for entry for a lot of people really. Yeah, that is, is the problem. I mm. I don't know why they haven't dropped the memory card prices by now. It just seems stupid to me. I don't understand. Because I've got, well, obviously, because I've got multiple PSN accounts, I think mm. I've got about four or five memory cards, so you can Oof. only imagine how much money I've spent. Oh, God, on them. yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I mean, I, I so got it's... a 16 or 32 for Christmas, but, like, I asked for it for Christmas to, like, mm. you know, mollify the blow a little bit. Yeah. Just, just, right. just a tiny piece of plastic, please. Thank you. He's right at the bottom of Santa's sack, and he gets back to like the North Pole and goes, "Oh bollocks! I found this at the bottom." <laughs> <laughs> I nearly, I nearly said at the bottom of my sack, but that sounds like the sort of pun that that we'd have we'd have said on the cop sesh last night. But all through us chatting, particularly uh, the Soul Sacrifice Delta stuff, um, I was always curious to see what you thought of Dark Souls because I thought in the same way as I was sort of glomming on to uh, Soul Sacrifice Delta that you might notice a similar dark fable fairy tale sort of aspect to it but I remember at the time you you was it you you tried it and didn't didn't fancy it or you kept resisting it yeah I I had a go on it and just something didn't click with me but at the same time it's kind of like a similar story to Monster Hunter you know, mm. you go on it and it doesn't quite click, but you think to yourself, why though? I should like this game. What's yep. wrong with me? And that is exactly the same thoughts that I had about Dark Souls. 
So, you know, obviously now is the time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do that though. A lot of people bounce off it once and come back. I, I did it. I bounced off Demon's Souls super hard. I was like, screw this. This is awful. Um, and then came back Indeed. to it later like, oh, I get it now. I get yeah. it. And you hear a lot. Like you hear that. We've, a lot of our guests we've had on have said the same thing. That they, they bounced off it and then came back later and like, oh, oh, and then they get it. Well, I, I did that must, well, recently with, um, with Bloodborne. Are you back um, in now? No. Nah. Oh, you f- <laughs> if, no! The, the thing man. is, though, you if, bloody, if, bloody, I, bloody man. if I if I started playing that now, mm. the odds are that I would ignore like Dark Souls three and I'd click with Bloodborne because that's the sort of shit that I'd pull. Classic sort of, CJ. Yeah, that you, you, <laughs> you, you mentioned that this would happen, so I've I've ignored that mm. for now. I know it's there, and I know that I I really want to like it, but um, mm. it's just something that's not right and there's no sense in forcing these things when when they're right they're right no force so, it <laughs> how dare you i do think it's a type of game that you you should probably focus on as well and not like yeah yeah play dark souls at the same time so that's probably what i'm going to do because i've had the same issue with bloodborne um after playing salt and sanctuary Bloodborne did click with me a bit more and then mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, but I want Dark Souls though. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing with Bloodborne is it is because it is, I don't know if it's faster paced but it needs a different skill set certainly uh, to play and it needs a different brain on and if you go to it straight after playing a lot of Dark Souls, you're going to do, a, you're going to have a bad time, you, you're not going to do well because it happened to me a few times, I went back and think oh, just about halfway through the game I'll pick it back up and getting utterly, utterly trolleyed like, Yeah, but I think utterly that, trolleyed I- I think a lot of people have gone from Bloodborne and used that playstyle in Dark Souls. Mm. And in uh, in Kylie's regard, I think that because Soul Sacrifice Delta is very much kind of not really shield stuff, is it? It's bouncing around and trying to trying to get you in with the with the enemies and stuff. Certainly, there was a lot of dashing in the in the stuff that I played with that. So yeah. Um, so so with you saying that um, you played Salt and Sanctuary, what? Uh, what tempted you to uh, to play that? Did it come through as a review code, or um, was it one of those where you were like, mm, that, that, looks, "That looks pretty good"? Well, obviously, I heard stuff about it saying, you know, it's a two D Souls like game and stuff, and I was like, "Hmm, maybe I'll have a better time with this because it is two D." Mm. So I requested a review code, and uh, they were kind enough to give me it. I think about two weeks before release, and I mm. started playing it. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, this is this is really fun, actually. Mm. Um, spent probably far too much time grinding salt on it, though. So I was probably overpowered <laughs> for the bosses and things. But that's what I enjoyed. I enjoyed, um, oh, if I level up, I can, you know, upgrade this stat. Or I can, you know, use my salt and upgrade this weapon and things like that. And then it was because of that enjoyment that I thought, well, it's similar to... Dark Souls, so I may mm. as well give that another go now because this has clearly clicked with me at this point. Mm. So, Gateway yeah. drug. Gateway yeah. drug. Mm. Plus, plus, you'd seen a certain certain special edition and it it caught your eye. <laughs> oh, that sexy apocalypse edition. <laughs> it's it it looks far nicer in the real than it ever looked on the on the on the pre release pictures. It's uh, definitely the. I would actually say it's the nicest game case I own. I'd even say it's nicer than any uh, Blu-ray steelbook I own as well. It's mm. it's probably the nicest <laughs> nicest <laughs> one I have. Well, when so. they when they first announced it, it just looked. You just thought it was going to be like a a, a grey sort of proper steel type case with with the, the black on on top, but it's this really beautiful kind of cobalt blue dark metallic and with the and all the stuff particularly the back where you've got the uh, the design of the knight on there it just looks like it's, it's drawn in charcoals it's beautiful yeah definitely so um when the game arrived then and you uh you put the disc in what what informed your design of the character and your class choices <laughs> well, I try and make my characters look like me as much as possible, so I had to give her red hair and blue eyes. And um... you're, you're among friends here. We all do that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the old days, I used to make them look completely different to me, so it's changed as I've gotten older. Um, normally, when I have a character like that, I call them Ray Maria, but I didn't this time. Mm. 
So anyway, um, I think I went the night class and I just chose that because I was watching, I think, Christopher Odd on YouTube and I believe mm. he went night class. Mm. Uh, or no, he went, was it mercenary? I don't know. Anyway, mm. I chose the knight because I was like, I definitely want to use a shield and I'll just give it a go. I didn't know if I was going to stay with it, um, but it, it just worked out. So <laughs> mm. I, don't, I don't think there was any real, you know, push for me to, to go for that class. I just knew I definitely wanted to have a shield and that's about it. Mm. <laughs> so it's a solid so, choice. I mean, it's a very solid choice. I think a lot of, a lot of Souls folks will go for the knight class. Uh, straight away because it's it's almost tradition now because you've got uh, they started that way with Demon Souls and it's uh, I don't know it's 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 often the first choice of a uh, mm. run through a world just simply because it's I don't know it's the uh, it's the most natural feeling compared to like the previous games but uh, was there was there that kind of class in Salt and Sanctuary then it's, it was that was that your 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 sort of class over there. Yeah, I've actually got two characters on that. I'm, mm. I believe, a cleric on my co-op playthrough with my boyfriend, which is pretty fun. Uh, mm. Never really played as a cleric before, so that's pretty cool, <laughs> using the uh, prayers and stuff. Um, and yeah, my main character is a knight class, so it's awesome. You're a cleric, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie gets punted in a hole and doesn't get that joke yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I still remember my my, my friend uh, um, uh, is on his debut sort of runs through of uh, of, of Dark Souls two. Um, that he came up with like the thing every time he saw like a magic user, it was like "fuck you, magic man." I was like, that needs to be a t shirt. <laughs> so yeah, Pierre uh, Pierre creates on Twitch. Uh, that that uh, that still resonates on that one every time uh, you see somebody that's a, a mage. But no mage shaming here. No mage shaming. Not at all. Boo, sorcery. How dare you. Boo. <laughs> Apparently sorcery is way harder at this time. I was chatting to Jeremy Greer uh, from many places now, uh, from Dark Souls Haters, from uh, Dark Insight Podcast, and from his new show, Don't Give Up Skeleton, which is interviews with the Souls people, which is really, really good. Um, I was chatting which to him I, earlier. Which I named. You, well done, you. Um, yeah, thanks, man. Uh, it's, all your, it's all the credit's yours. Uh, chatting to him earlier, yeah. and apparently sorcerer <laughs> early game is not particularly easy anymore. Apparently, it's quite hard. Yeah, they they nerfed um, miracle stuff in uh, Dark Souls two quite heavily, and I've heard they've done the same sort of thing here, which uh, which bums me out. But uh, good, how dare you, bloody so ha- skirt wearing scholars! Shut up, Ginger. <laughs> uh, how did you get on? I do. How, all right. <laughs> um, how did you get on with uh, the opening area? Sort of getting used to the combat, the feel of the world. Uh, and the the design, I guess, as well. Uh, pretty well, to be honest. Uh, the the smaller enemies weren't too bad. Obviously, when I came across that crystal ice lizard thingy. Oh God! Yeah. Oh, gorgeous! <laughs> so beautiful looking, and uh, I was just like, yeah, you you kind of remind me of uh, Oregon from Monster Hunter. <laughs> the way he's rolling around and stuff, mm. and uh, that was fun. It took me a couple of tries, but. Uh, I got the hang of it, I think. Did you did you did you kill that straight away then? It, it, at the start, yeah, I pretty much didn't move oh, on blimey. until I killed it. Wow. I think Knight gets a decent shield though. I think a decent shield makes all the difference on that because I tried it mm. with my mercenary and got utterly utterly stomped because he's got a bad shield. Funnily enough, that 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 uh, that massive crystal lizard near the start looks like the sort of thing that you would buy a plush of. Yes. Oh, I like that. Because, uh, Kylie, you've bought like a number of these sort of dragons, haven't you? These sort of puppet like dragons. I don't know sort of quite, quite how to describe them properly, but they're amazing. And yeah. it looks like something that you would have that's got like the little little sort of uh, bits that you can, you can fold and, and tweak around. <laughs> I've got too many of them now. I've run out of space. There's like two on the windowsill. No, actually, there's a third one as well, a smaller one. So two big ones, uh, one little one on the windowsill, one on top of my computer, one on top of my jewellery box, and there's one on the floor, which is the biggest one I have, uh, which is Oberon, and that can go on your shoulder. Is that oh, a wow. sodding great purple big. thing? Yeah, the, the well, it's uh, blue. Oh, okay. Did you see the video of it? And it's got like, the ostrich yeah, feathers on it. Yeah. yeah. 
That, that's uh, the most expensive one I have gotten. The purple one, which is posable, was a commission, so I did actually tell them what I wanted for that one. But other than that, the other ones are, were just like pre-made and I purchased them. So <laughs> I've got no space left though, so I can't get any more. So you, you've got a, a vid up of this anyway, which is the first point where I was like, oh my god, this is cool. Um, and so what did you make of the of the first boss? Really awesome. The setting mm. and the scenery and everything and, you know, pulling pulling the blade out and that, that noise and then he starts waking up and I was like, oh my god. And I was playing it with my sound bar on, so the, the volume oh, wow. was a yeah, lot, yeah. lot louder. Mm. And... Um, my mum came in and she was like can you turn it down because it's so much louder and I was like I can't I'm in the middle of fighting you know? for the love of God leave me alone but people, people say that Dark Souls not having a pause button is uh, is, is a problem uh, a lot of the time but I also think on the other side of it it's just like fuck off and leave me alone I can't do anything about it even if I wanted to which I don't <laughs> when I'm playing and the phone goes, it's like, oh yeah. god, why? And like, you sort of lean over and knock it on speaker and lean in, like, what? <laughs> so I presume you'd, you'd, you'd seen this uh, on uh, the early Christopher Rod vids that you uh, that you watched. Yeah. Um, what did you What did you make of it at, at that time with the, regards to? Did you were you noticing the design straight away, or was there was there certain things where you're going like, oh, look at that transformation. Look at the goop. Look at the hand. Did you see his snake oil before you took the sword out? The what? <laughs> that sounds snake, dirty. <laughs> his snake oil. Sitting on his shoulders. The goo. Oh, the goo. yeah, yeah. The snake oil, yeah. The oh, magic licorice. Like, yeah, I did see that. It's. <laughs> did you see the magic licorice? <laughs> does, the, does that mean we're dating? <laughs> oh. Don't judge. Well... Watching his videos are what pushed me to get the game, but playing it yourself is just so much more immersive and, and intense as well, especially when that music just really kicks in and, mm. you know, I'm like, oh, run away, and he's doing that huge leap attack. Oh, that was awesome, and the noise it makes when he hits the ground. So good. How many, the- how many times did it take you to beat? Um... I think that's that's the one that took me the longest to beat actually i'm pretty oh. sure yeah out of all of them i think um because obviously i was probably still getting used to the controls at that point so mm. probably around eight or nine tries i think mm. um but that that out of all of them has took me the longest but that was so. one of the things that with uh, with my playthrough as well that i, I kept on going through the enemies at least at, um like at, at first like knocking a few of the enemies down and then going to the boss so every time i then went through the fog gate and grabbed my souls back i'd got an accumulation so when I, I did eventually sort of move on uh to the hub afterwards i got maybe nine or ten k souls that i could throw into upgrading which i think helped so i think that's another uh, another one of those uh aspects of you know this they, they say that souls has got no easy mode but if you do battle through that you're then giving yourself an extra advantage for the for the next level whilst also you know learning the the mechanics of the game and and what it takes to be that exhilarated and to um to to perform that well because it does it does demand that you you bring a bit of skill to the table yeah definitely i mean i think i had a similar amount actually when i first uh, got to the shrine about 9k Mm. as well um one of the things that put me off Dark Souls was how hard people said it was but Mm. after playing it myself it's kind of like well it's hard if you don't observe your enemy if you rush in blindly and you know if you die always make sure you go and pick up your souls don't go carry on fighting and just let yourself die again you Mm. know so I don't know oh you're one of those people oh you're turning into one of those people what we all are it's not hard it's challenging yeah, it's challenging. I mean, you know, it's it's like with any game, as long as you learn it. And uh, I, I mean, I probably play a bit more cautious, to be honest, and that's the Monster mm. Hunter experience kicking in. Um, so 
I know that probably frustrates some people. I mean, on the videos I have uploaded, someone said, uh, oh, you know, you, you're taking your time too much. And it's like, well, if that's the way I play and it works for me, then then I may as well carry on using it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I, think, I think that's always been part of the fun of, um, for, the, for the community, at least, of watching other people play the games. And uh, there's constantly been uh, a big YouTube community and a big Twitch community now where it's fun to see how people tackle different things with different play styles and different builds and um, often the the most fun is is seeing somebody that does something that you would never have thought of and I know that you know in my own run I, I throughout the games I've built up a uh, a love of being a bit of a bowcaster and uh as you saw sort of uh, last night when we were co-oping, if I can pick something off from about 10 miles away, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, I would say that maybe the difficulty was was uh, perhaps maybe overhyped isn't the best term to use, but because so many people said how hard it was, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to go into this and my metaphorical balls are going to be crushed and, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't <laughs> but, wish that on a lady any time, but, but you know, I mean, don't ginger. get me wrong, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm definitely not. It is challenging mm. and there has been parts where I've died and died and died, mainly on that first boss, but that said, um, you know, I, I think it's a really enjoyable game and I do think if you've got the time to give it a go, you really should because I'm kind of kicking myself that I hadn't played it sooner, to be honest. Well, Jim Sterling did a video recently where he was saying that, you know, they, the, the whole prepare to die thing was uh, something that Bando, Bandai Namco kind of really sort of hung their hat on. Uh, with regards to the you know the marketing of the game and going like oh it's a it's a really hard game and oh you've got to be a really good gamer to get it but they, there's that other side of it whereby there are people that are put put off by that just mm. thinking that they're not going to be good enough for it and you know I've said before I'm not great at games but the fact that I can uh, I can take no end of time if I want to, to to get something or I can go back and you know uh, grind souls or you know even recently when um, doing the uh, the DLC in Dark Souls 2 it was something that took me absolutely ages I had to rethink my entire build um, and eventually got through it and beat the boss and Paddy did it first time yeah um, but it, it, <laughs> yeah it, 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 <laughs> world's greatest what? human but it works like that sometimes, and I, 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 that's that's what fascinates me about the game. It's the uh, the continual the the continuing enigma of that, um, and even going like, oh well, like this is my normal play style. What if I built a new character and I wasn't allowed to use any of the stuff that I used before? And how would I do that differently? Or how could I play it differently? And I, that's what keeps me coming back to the games because I. I enjoy going through them. It's a it's a pleasure to walk in these worlds, and it's a fun game to play. Never mind, you know, when the when the other stuff sort of starts kicking in, when the the stories and the characters and yeah, I am still fascinated how they've they've come up with such an intricate design of the world, like the visual look of the world, so quickly. Like it must have, obviously it must have been uh, running in tangent with Bloodborne, but uh, it still takes my breath away. Mm. It really, really does. Same here, to be honest. I mean, that's what, another reason why I just had to get it because I was just like, this is absolutely stunning. You know, <laughs> it's a very pretty I mean, game, and it's got some yeah. of the best skyboxes I've ever seen. It's like, oh, this. I, mm. Uh, and it does the um, it's done the Dark Souls one thing as well, where things you see you can probably go to. Yeah, if you if you get the binoculars and you mm. uh, you start looking around, particularly you can you can definitely see sort of the areas that you've been mm. and that you can go to. And, and on that second that. run, which I'm in the middle of now, I, I took a moment a while uh, the other day and just sort of got to a point where you can see quite a lot of the land. You look around mm. like, oh, there's that, which means that that and that's that and that's that. I wonder if that's down there. Yep, there's that down there. It was amazing. They're like, yes, it works again. So, so once you before we sort of tuck into uh, uh, the the high wall of Lockrick, what did you what did you make of uh, the run up to Phylink Shrine and uh, the actual visual interpretation once you once you got in there? Because obviously the the place itself is ever evolving, so uh, it's difficult for us to 
properly touch on all that it can be until we finish the, the run, I think. But uh, yeah, curious to know your thoughts. Uh, just really beautiful, to be honest. I mean, the the characters in there are really interesting and the, the voice acting is amazing, obviously. Mm. I can't speak about the previous games because I haven't played them, but definitely <laughs> really like the characters and stuff and going around and, you know, reading all the information on the uh, back of the thrones, I guess they are, or seats, mm. giant yeah. chairs. <laughs> speaking to tiny man <laughs> so yeah it's it's just really good and it was so because i said it took me quite a long time to defeat that first boss i was like yes finally safety <laughs> so i took a moment to rest and then i went round and spoke to everyone and stuff so but i like it's, it's... that um more mm. more and more people can come in you know as you unlock them Hmm. It's even, definitely not even, a fixed location. Like things change there quite a lot, and sometimes things will change, and you don't know why they changed. Even the even the stuff where um, I, when I first started having a wander around, and all of a sudden I was like, "Was was that bit open near the top in the first place?" And I, I hadn't quite clicked that it. Um, I'd gotten. I'd spent twenty k on the on the key, and that had probably unlocked the uh, you know the access to that. Um, yeah, but yeah, there was that was a point where I kind of went, oh my word! But uh, yeah, I, I, it's it's almost like there's something uh, of an an old castle or like a Harry Potter discovering new rooms in the school sort of aspect of it, which I I really kind of dig. I love that though. I love it when there's loads of different paths and nooks and crannies in games and, and hidden mm. items and stuff. Like I actually went back through. Um, you know the Lothric area earlier before starting this, and I, I found some stuff that I hadn't picked up before. So I love mm -hmm. that. Oh, the layers are multi-level. But I did the same thing this morning. I ran my guy back through and had a little nose around again, and found like five or six more things that I hadn't picked up on my uh, well, not initial run, but like second run of it. Like, oh, mm. oh yeah, oh this, oh yeah. So I know some folks have said that um, Dark Souls Three couldn't be <coughs> somebody, somebody's first Souls game. In the same way as they said that people wouldn't move back through the uh, the games after Bloodborne, but I've found that that's really not the case, um, and especially with a a sixty one percent sales increase on Dark Souls two on on the opening day, I think that people are pitching into this that they really haven't touched those games before, and I, I find that I find that exciting. It's interesting to see, uh, particularly with the links between. Uh, Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls that moving back through the series it's going to be ace to see you get to say Dark Souls and just go oh it's you yeah and, and that's you that's that equally, reverse moment that we had that's equally as alluring I, I, I find that fascinating and um, and people have moved through the series and I know you, you said that you've you've bought Dark Souls 2 yeah. for when you finish this which is a and you did that quite early on so that's really a quite the statement of intent definitely <laughs> See, if I could liken it to anything like I'd say like the Souls games like that though, they're kind of like Discworld books you can read them out of order if you want but I think you do get more of a sense of the series as you go through them one by one but you can totally totally play them out of order like 100% so um, so jumping from uh, Phylink Shrine what were your, your thoughts of the, the look and design once you got to uh, to the High Wall of Lothric um. Well, the the, the scary um, I don't know what the like men in the trees like all look like they're part of the trees. I yeah, made a note of them. I was the like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, tree men. <laughs> yeah. But the imagination and yeah. verve, the sheer panaz, the pizzazz, panaz, uh, which is probably a wine uh, and panache that Patrick brings to his uh, his vivacious and florid naming of the, uh, of the of the world is really is really the essence of well, the man. You knew who I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> my my version was probably going to be like the st wooden st still st men, the, the tree guys, herbaceous tree Harold. dudes, <laughs> bark bros. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mark when I... Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, Pam. Oh, yeah. It's all ruined. <laughs> We're in. Kylie, go on. Yeah, so when I saw them, I was just like, yeah, shit's about to get real. And, uh, you know, seeing the kind of 
I don't know, stone slash dead slash, I don't know, frozen dragons. <laughs> I was like, yes, dragons! Because as did you, you know, I the, love dragons. Did you expect the treeman? Did you expect the treeman to wake up? Yes, I did. I thought, am yeah. I going to start running off and they're going to jump down behind me and, like, I don't know, kick me or something? <laughs> mm. So did you go to the... Because you've got um, two branching paths from the start. Did you go towards the left or did you head towards the right? Um, I probably went towards the right because I tend Ooh, to always go right first because I put my right foot first when I walk and in games when there is a branching path, I just automatically go to the right for some reason it is a habit of mine no i do the same with the with the left because i kicked with my left foot when i used to play football <laughs> See, i go by sense. whichever has the smallest looking men oh do because i i have known uh some people that will kind of wander around one area and then size it up and then go to the other option. Oh, that's me. And then size it up. Is mm. that you? Yeah, in and out, in and out. You know, make sure I'm going the right way. Because I think the game does do a good job of kind of telling you which way is the, well, brackets, correct way of going. Because the enemies are definitely harder on the right than they are on the left. Like, once Big Axe Bastard turns up, hmm. like, he's not a pushover at the start. Especially when you, you pick a class without a decent shield and you're not quite used to the flow. Hmm. Like... It definitely tells you, not in the, the, sorry for the references here, Kylie, not in the Firelink Shrine skeleton kind of way, where you go down a path, it's like, ha ha ha, here's infinite death. Um, but it, more of a kind of a gentle way, like, it's quite hard here. You know, this guy's pretty strong. Maybe, maybe you try the other way. Maybe try the other way. Uh, and you tend to get further. But not to say there aren't tr- treasures down there. Um, mm. did, you, did you progress all the way down that path first, Kylie? Did you make it all the way to the back? I don't think so. <laughs> there were certain enemies that I was just... I'd, I had a go against and I realised they were quite hard and I would just try and avoid and wait till I was, like, higher level. <laughs> Do you think this could have had the same uh, same effect as in the original Dark Souls? There were kind of three branching paths that you could, you could go on um, with one of them taking you uh, down to the depths of New Londo with ghosts uh, one that of the... can murder you and you can't touch them yeah yep. there's, there's another one that takes you to the skeleton graveyard which can get back up as soon tear... as you knock them over yeah which can tear you apart and then there's the, the run into kind of uh, uh, <coughs> the main area which is a... but some people had, had went straight to the skeleton graveyard and just went fuck this <laughs> um, so do you, do you think that right hand side is isn't quite as harsh a lesson as, nah, as previous pad. It's gentle. It's gentle. Mm. It's definitely more gentle than that. It's like this is a little bit tough. You can do it, but you're gonna have to try hard. Like, and you so can we... totally go there first, and it's not a problem if you know what you're doing. Like, yeah, I, I, I think the it is a more a much more dangerous path though. I, I think you can only get so depends far how, though as well, hard, aren't you? Depends how hard you are, though, isn't it? So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I I went. Uh, I kind of nipped in and out of both. A little bit, because I kind of kept second guessing myself and kept running back in. And I mean, that right path kind of bottoms out quite quick, as you say. It dead ends quite mm. quick on you. Um, did you get surprised by the thing? By what thing? So you go up the stairs at the end of the right path, and you go up the stairs and you turn around a corner and there's some dudes. You like cut the items. Like, oh, cool! I can I can deal with this. Uh, and then snake oil. The goop monster. Which I, I still think look like T Rexes. Oh, you know the, the the transformation. The goo man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, right, I'm gonna run in. I'm gonna, you know, bolster the wall. I'm gonna do this, and then, yeah, that happened. <laughs> I was like, yeah, run away, mm. run away. So a nice thing is, if you get in there quick, you can smash that bugger before he pops. So you you can yeah, I, take him out yeah. quick. Which is yeah, a nice. He'll, get, he'll go down with a headshot as well from uh, uh, from a bow and arrow, <gasps> pretty pretty nicely. <gasps> Sorry, yeah. I've just googled the man. Okay, I've just googled what that enemy is called. Hmm. Puss of man. Oh. Puss of man. Puss. Delightful. They sound like Ooh. they'd be they'd be third on the bill at a at a metal gig, which yeah. is which is <laughs> I think a joke that we made on Bonfire Side Chat about two years ago. But um, it is true, puss of man. Oh, one of the uh, one of the little points on the combat information part of the wiki is its large size makes it easy to hit. Yeah, but it kicks your butthole. <laughs> My favourite thing about those, and it was something that uh, that I noticed early on, and it still makes me giggle, 
is when that kind of big puppet, sock puppet thing sort of comes out the top of them, there's a certain point where he starts flailing that it, it does look like Kermit the Frog when he's going like, Welcome to the Muppet Show! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Especially later on when you get the one that uh, that you can climb up the ladder and, and sort of avoid, where you see it like, just like, yay! <laughs> behind it. Uh, makes me laugh. <laughs> so there you, if... pick up the, you pick up the longbow, don't you? Which is, I think bows are better in this game than they've ever been. I don't know what you think. Like, bows are amazing in this game. I uh, have always relied on bows. They've, they've given you um, less ammo than they've ever given you, but I've not used this short bow yet, and on the preview videos, that looked like... Mm. They've got I've a lot not... of rapid fire powers and things, whereas like, the, yeah, the standard longbow not... has the I'm going to shoot you really hard option. Yeah, and I, I do love shooting something in the head and it going like, <laughs> I've got an arrow in my head! And I like that uh, that was still a bit Muppet Show, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, Piggy. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, and I like the fact that when stuff is shot with arrows, including you, um, you wander along with the arrow in you for quite some time, or oh, they sure. do as well. And that just makes me laugh. And as the game yeah. progresses, the arrows get bigger and more scary, and it gets funnier and funnier and funnier. I, uh, I shared a screen grab because I ended up with... I think it was like a, a throwing knife or a dagger in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, did, did the usual thing of, um, you know, I used to be an adventurer like you until I took a dagger to the face. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm so, so badass. I can just carry on. This, this is yeah. nothing. <laughs> the best part is like the character's just like zero fucks given. Like, yeah. yeah, so what? It's in my face. Big whoop. Oh, you're going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to cry. It's just a knife in the face. So that, that area in itself, the, the right hand run, we mm. can kind of double back to towards the end of this because we mm. you end up unlocking a um, a lift towards it. Shortcut. Um, oh, shortcut. So, so <laughs> if we if we, if we go through um, from the left side, you've got um, the worshippers with the the now named tree men. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how did you get on with uh, the? The lad that comes up the stairs with the sort of incense lantern and starts screaming and then sort of uh, attracts more people towards you. Did that kind of take you off guard or freak you out a bit? Or Yeah, definitely you... the first time uh, it took me off guard. I think I might have died there the first time mm. I came against that. And then after that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to start picking them off first. And then... Mm. Um, pretty much it came to a point where he would come up the stairs do his weird noise and then um the one from the left corner would run and it would just be two yeah. of them mm. to deal with so that was fine at that point did you, so did you notice flails, they... as well the, the, the flail they do when they get their knife and uh, there's always been one of them in every dark souls game where uh, yeah. one of them will run up and just gonna go i'm gonna swing my knife around in front of me for like five minutes and then they go like oh fuck Oh God! <laughs> Just a minute. Just a minute. But if it catches you, like it's deadly. Like, but they that that leads you off guard a little bit in itself because there's uh, there's one of my favourite enemies a little bit later on that is actually around the the other uh, the other way is the the axe guy that's like I'm going to swing Max now. No, in a minute. In a minute. <laughs> there you go. And he um, and he's a sod because often if you think you're going to time it in the same way as you would with one of the normal enemies, he he, he delays the swing until after you've jumped, which is bastard. That's a bastard, isn't it? Did you? Time um, is awful. Time is really hard to read. Did you go up the stairs to get uh, a closer look at the dragon and get the binoculars as well? I went upstairs, but I did not get the binoculars, I don't think. I still don't have them, you know. I would also like to... Where did you get them from? I think, <laughs> I think they're, up, they're, up, they're up the stairs. Just I've never found the... them. I've never found them. You took me there, CJ, on co-op, and you were like, oh, they should be the... here, and there was nothing there. Oh, I don't know. So... It sounds like a date. You took me there on co-op. <laughs> and there was I nothing want... there, and I was disappointed. I, want... <laughs> I wanted to see Zootropolis. <laughs> <laughs> Or Zootopia, or whatever it's called, in different countries. So, um, so beyond that, you've got um, f you can drop down from that top bit, and you can uh, fall sort of behind the dead dragon, 
and you can actually pick off the two guys that are in the next room because one of them's hiding behind <coughs> boxes and the other one's sort of just in the corner. Mm. So you, um, with bows and arrows, as you uh, as you get a bit niftier with them, you can remove them from their their flailing choppage, which is which is kind of cool. Um, you get the the insta souls as well, where there's a window that you can sort of walk up to, and the live dragon uh, will just go a bit mental. And you get a ton of souls. So that's your first little preview of uh, of that one. That was one of the things where it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> do you, do yeah. you find yourself uh, reflexively running back from the, the door just in case as well? Like I'm, I'm behind the wall, but he might still get me. At the point where the whoosh kicks in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary. What? Like, and then you go back outside to it, and and then it's it's even scarier because it's like right. You're shooting fire at both ways. What do I do? As as a fan of dragons, uh, having seen the dead dragon and then had the first glimpse of a live one, we like. Ooh. I was so happy. I was like, as soon as I saw the dead one, I was like, there better be a live dragon. Damn it! <laughs> and I need it, names. Yeah, and when it just flies in and then starts going nuts with the fire, I was like. Oh, you're so beautiful, but I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way you try to go, he's uh, mind you, he's he's also getting rid of loads of enemies for you as well. Yeah. Uh, but from that next bit, you've got the, uh, the the dichotomy of the guy that's firing the the fire arrows at you from the crossbow, yeah, and the guy that's hiding behind the shield with the the spear, mm. and that lad does not fuck about when he does decide to uh, to throw that shield that. That spear at you. Yeah, those guys are dicks. I died to those guys a couple of times, like to regular hollows, and I was like, "Am I doing this yeah. wrong?" Because the, the the spear guy will wait until the arrow guy has shot you and staggered you, and then he'll stab you. That is very Dark Souls. As yeah, well. and they stand just out of range of the bloody fire as well. Yeah, yeah. That part, I think, I died a few times on, and I actually went back to that <coughs> bit today because I hadn't gone up to hmm. where the dragon's breathing its fire to get all the hmm. uh, items. Um, I totally forgot about it because I was like mental note I'll come back here when I'm higher level and I forgot about it because I have a memory mm. like a fish so I went back and got those today but normally I just rush out and deal with the uh, guy shooting the arrows first and then quickly roll back and deal with the uh, spear guy I just so what, blitz out <laughs> at what point did you did you think maybe I can have a pop at the dragon what fight the dragon yeah the, the, the live one I haven't tried not tried to fight it. No, I've not tried to fight it. I've just avoided it. I shot really? it with an arrow and it did two damage. I'm like, right, fuck this. Moving I was on. just like, a... you know, you're 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 having a fun time on there, burning people, burning burning things. That that's all good. Just let me get these shinies, and you know, we'll just go our separate ways. You managed <laughs> to get the shinies with him still. Fire, firing, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went wow. back today, when I went back today, the level I am now, not then. <laughs> I just left them. It's gonna say it's not too hard actually. As long as you rush between blasts, you can kind of you'll you'll take some damage if you kind of bolt it and then just jump off the side when you've got everything. You can get away with it pretty pretty easily, I think. It's not it's, too the, bad. Well, it's the constant flinching though from the fire that kind of yeah. uh, mm. you know messes you up a bit. I I would just like gather two things, roll into the kind of like archway wait for him to do it again and then run out and get get the rest or you know get two more and, and just rinse and repeat mm. but i i probably would have died a lot had i have tried that previously but doing it today i can't remember what level i am i must be round level 40 so it wasn't an issue doing it today <laughs> yeah because there is a there is a way of getting the dragon to shift which isn't really that far away from there um but i'll i'll leave you to uh to figure out from where and what happens from there as well because well hell might be, I didn't might know that be quite happy <laughs> oh come on that's, that's that's demon souls 101 that is of getting a um a dragon to fuck off <laughs> i never did it what the hell man what you remember demon souls with the yeah this 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 is going to be sort of coercing like kylie into demon souls but the point where you've got the blue dragon and the red dragon <gasps> like ness nestling on that uh, <laughs> on that that massive patch of grass with loads of scorched earth around it um that's you know there's a there's a way of kind of doing things from there which are pretty cool and further on in the game as well when mm. one of them sods off and then just perches on top of a 
building. Mm. So when you get into the building under the dragon, then uh, mm-hmm. let's go there first. Um, I I clapped when I find I found the trick in there. Um, did, what, what did you make of the trick? The trick is so vague. <laughs> Again, my um, mem- so you walk in and there's a chest, and you're like, "Cool, first chest of the game. What is it? Oh, oh it's yeah. a mouth." Yeah. Um, like I did not expect them the the first chest in the game to be a goddamn mimic. I mean, that is brilliant. And I laughed and I clapped and I got eaten and I died. I, I but I didn't mind because it was funny. Um, yeah, yeah. But like the first one. The first one in the game? I didn't expect uh, it either, but again, I just laughed. <laughs> you know, I was like, that's good. It's a good job. I'd... You got me. And like, it, it really, I mean, more than any other Souls game, it makes me really panic on every single chest because, like, usually you don't see them to the good, you know, four or five areas in. You know, you, you expect there to be a bit of a build up, get yourself your confidence up, and then they hit you with the mimics. It's this time, it's like, nah, mimics everywhere. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't show you a mimic in Dark Souls two for quite some time, did Ages. they? And they they hid it a little better as well. And then you it's... play Scholar and they move them. <laughs> yeah, bloody bastards. Uh, that that kind of that laugh really unsettles me. I know it was something that we spoke about on co op with the um, the the fat ladies a little <laughs> a little further <laughs> further down, but mm. but that um, that kind of. <laughs> That the, that the mimics do <laughs> genuinely unsettling yeah and, and they are terrifying still like they got me with their grab attack and they chomped my face like four or five times before I got that done and I, I don't know what was wrong with me like usually I'm quite good with mimics you see I, I had the good measure to uh, to fire an arrow at the at the chest from from above so they, they couldn't get near I'm me I'm always scared I'm going to break it though what? But just one shot's not going to break it. Yeah, but I won't want to get rubbish. Like in the old games, you broke the chest, you just get rubbish, and it might be sound yeah, brilliant. But, but never, never on first shot. Yeah, I'd, I'd still panic. No, nah. I, I, I get, I get close, and I watch them now. And uh, there are ways of telling, definitely. But I, I watch them to see if they breathe. Really, I, I didn't notice that. I noticed that the the the, the chain that's on the. Mm. Uh, on the side of the chest is normally a little bit more raggedy and pointing in a different direction, but I didn't recognise them breathing. Yeah, yeah. Next time you're down there, just just stand next to one. Next one you know it is. Move the camera right down to where it is and just wait for a few seconds, and you'll see the top of the chest just lift ever so slightly. Just oh man! Oh, and it's sweet. like, oh, I get it. And you can move the camera in, and you can kind of see the teeth and the tongue as well. So the mimic itself is is pretty much back to. The, the original Dark Souls sort of mimic mm. because the, the the one in Dark Souls 2 would would stand up and then f- its its arms would go the opposite direction and it would fall with its back near to the floor almost like it was a dog and then come like rushing towards you which is just mm. fucking horrible <laughs> um, but well, these ones I, I, stand I, up like like big boys do they still do the um, the kind of massive rugby kicks yeah. that, they, that, that they used to do <laughs> yeah. in, the, in, in Dark Souls? Because those were just like horrible. Oh, the kicks hilarious! Like I haven't been hit with it once yet because you can like you can kind of feel it coming. Like you can see them kind of gearing up for it. It's like oh, I'm going to kick you. Oh, I missed. So so just past that we get to uh, the first night. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. What did you? What did you? Because uh, <laughs> this, this, this again harkens back to uh, to Demon Souls, where when you saw these lads, they were going to put up a fight against you, and I think that they've they've gone back to that proper proper scrap. And even in the uh, the stress test, the different builds that I had had different results against the the battle against these mm. uh, these folks. But uh, what 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 did you make of it, Kylie? Tough, definitely Sorry. tough. I, I died. <laughs> I think I avoided him for quite some time after mm. that, like just r- ran away. But I d- did manage to beat him after a while. But yeah, definitely, <coughs> definitely tough. One of the tougher, smaller enemies um, in the game at near the start. Mm. And he's like a dick as well. Like I've got yeah. one note written down about him, and it's dick with lots of eyes. <laughs> no, I'd, 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 I'd say that the. Uh, I don't want to say Dick Knight because it, it, it sounds like sounds like a comic book character. Also, it sounds maybe like somebody that would be in a porno, um, or it sounds like a plan for later on in the evening. 
I say. <laughs> oh. You're you're a saucy lady. Oh. Um so um how did you how did you take him down eventually? Uh lots of rolling. Get him, yeah. get him behind him. <laughs> so Basically. would you say limp biscuit style? <laughs> So, because it's difficult with these guys because they will do the shield bash as well. Yeah. So it's not just the uh, the regular attacks, and the, they're quite handy at kicking in with the sword arts. But uh, but also they will like do a fuck off, like if you're near the shield, which is mm. pretty unsettling. That sort of weird little backhanded little piss off. Yeah. Ding. I caught me out so many times. I thought I'll wheel around for a backstab, and nope, he's cracked me in the mouth with his shield. Yeah. I mean, you can, like, I mean, I, for a long time, I kind of beat him once and thought, well, I'm not going to fight him every time. So I'm always using at least one or two Estus on him as well. So I, I thought, let's watch him. And he kind of just walks off and you can kind of just run behind him if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. but point of pride. Point of pride. Done him once, it's enough. No. I always like to, uh, to, to better myself against against those things yeah but when you're on a boss run you're like I don't don't have time for you today so no you say I've seen people in fact this a lot of this was going off last night as well when you two were going through the road of sacrifices when you were just like running past stuff something in my mentality goes no you're gonna die you're gonna get fucked up you're gonna panic you just pick things off until this everything is dead (laughs) yeah but let's 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 make let's give this context my character at the moment has no armor on he's just running around with a stick yeah, but my, my my I I started off as deprived. <laughs> so did I. What my my and, man and he, it was a deprived. My my delightful orange chin face is uh, is a deprived, and he's got his stick with nails, and that's pretty much all he's got. Well, both both of my characters are uh, are just trousers and gloves. One <laughs> of them one of them was was becoming uh, some sort of fiery, this man, until. We'll we'll get to that. We'll get there time. later. Yeah, <laughs> Heart, heartbreak. Don't upgrade but your friends' time. weapons. We'll get to that later. No, no, yeah. don't do that. So, um, <laughs> so just around the corner from that, there's the uh, the second bonfire in the game, the tower on the wall. Poof. Did you dis- did you discover it or did you just head on? I discovered it. I believe. Oh yeah, first first door you go through. Absolutely, first door I went through. Because it it is just it is kind of out of the way and around the corner as well, but. Uh, mm. It's easy to, to although, miss, I think. Although, 17 messages on the floor going, bonfire this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't looking at that. I read all of them. <laughs> I read all of them. I've, some, I've, I've sent some wonderful messages. Some wonderful messages. Good way of saying as well that um, leaving messages on the ground, lots of people have clicked onto the fact that um, they're a good way of just getting your health topped up as the as the, the area goes on. Um, they've rescued me a few times, I must mm. admit. I'm, I, I think I, I fell away from writing the messages in Dark Souls 2. Certainly not in the same way as I did in, in Demon Souls and Dark Souls, but on this one I'm, I'm really trying to lay as many down as possible, not just for uh, altruistic reasons, but for selfish ones as well, because there was one point where, a um, bit further on in the game, in the catacombs, where I was fighting some skelly boss and he got me down to a sliver of health, like the, the blue tear stone ring kicked in, and all Ooh. of a sudden it was like, your message has been rated and like my, my health just went right up to like full ember and I was like oh this is the best <laughs> <laughs> it was right at the uh, at the opportune moment so I think that's uh, that's kind of instilled it's a, like you've received a little a text. momentum on. you've received a text on your phone from, from a friend who's gone you're right there was a bonfire ahead thanks mate and you're like oh yes and there's your fighting spirit back again but but in, in this world that you're creating mm. I'm on my deathbed yeah, and some, but somebody's texted me with life. That that's not a thing, Pat. Fighting spirit. No, it's it's a measure of your will to fight. So if you if you monkey around further down from there, you get to a grey rat, Ooh. and uh, you can unlock his cell. Uh, obviously, he then goes to Violet Shrine, and he will sell you stuff. And he has a mission for a little bit later on. But what did you what did you make of of Grey Rat? And not only uh, his demeanor and voice acting, but also Grey Rat's hat. I, oh, I love I love him to bits. I I wanted that hat <laughs> as soon as I saw it. I was like, yep, I need that in my life. But he's definitely one of my favorite uh, characters that I have in my shrine. Definitely, he's quite he's quite difficult to. 
uh, to figure out as well because I mean Pad's probably out of this a little bit at this point because he's finished the game but it's one of those where they set him up almost as if the suspicious bad guy but then they veer back again and you don't just you don't quite know at this point mm. if it's just him or not yeah I don't trust him but I want to trust him <laughs> it's mm. the way I feel <laughs> It's like I'm under no illusions. If I, you know, if, if there ever was permanent death, he would loot my body and, and quite happily sell my gear. Mm. <laughs> so, well, he's a pragmatic even when... soul. He's pragmatic. You know, he makes the best of a bad situation. But yeah. even when you send him out, and he's he's just like he's he's talking to you about how how good he is at like rummaging and stuff. You're just thinking like. Well, you sound a little bit sinister about this, but this is apparently what you did. You just robbed the bodies of the dead, and there are plenty of people that have died in this land, so mm. fair enough. Which, and let's I think be that... fair, the player character is doing super bad as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much. I mean, let's, also... let's not look down on people here. But also, I mean, I know it's sort of jumping ahead to the to the next the next level a little mm. bit, but his reaction when you bring him something back is sort of genuinely caught me off guard. Mm. Yeah. Um. And especially because he 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 won't he disappears for a little while after that as well, and then comes back the next time. And I I, I thought I'd lost him at that point. I was I worried that whole time. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was a, a wonderful piece of characterization for uh, for someone that essentially is an NPC in a in a hub world. After that, but I don't know. You, you, I think it's one of those emotional anchors that you start to. I don't know, get hooked on the game a little bit. You you start to bed yourself in with the the people and the lore and stuff. Also, Oogie Boogie Man hat. Yes, is... yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like the hat. I don't like that it covers up whatever visage you've made. As a man who Rune likes face. his character creators, yeah, <laughs> I, I like my character creators. I like to be able to see the either orange faced man that I've made or the facsimile of myself, which, to be fair, also is an orange faced man. Well, um, you didn't want to see my character's face, though. <laughs> there was something going on in that face. <laughs> that that character Some... has had a hard life. Somebody needs to uh, do an Etsy making those those hats because I can just imagine like a you know like uh, Manchester Christmas. It's 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 the, the German markets there. People are wandering around in scarves and coats and oh, they're eating little little pop cobs and they've, they've, they've got some apple sauce on there and then somebody wanders past with like a, re, a, a sort of a blue and white knitted like grey rat hat with like the, the bit going all the way down the back and people are just being genuinely fearful little crocheted beard on the front no, whilst acknowledging that it probably quite warm yeah <laughs> <laughs> probably quite warm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, going into uh, going into the to the Arndale and like the security going like, can you can you remove that hat? And you'd be like, goodbye and, and stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of my favourite things ever. And like, uh, I I've, I've got to the point where I'm saying that when I I leave sort of the the conversation at the same time. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, all of that I say it at the same time and then kind of have like a a little geeky chuckle to myself. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, Grey Rat disappears back to uh, Firelink Shrine. Mm-hmm. We've then got, um, I'm trying to read my notes here, uh, we've got a fire guy. A fire guy? A fire guy? Fire guy. I've written down fire guy. Do you mean the bit where you start going onto the rooftops? Um, <sighs> It's very shortly after that, certainly. The bit where you start heading out to the rooftops and there's a, a big guy with a halberd down below. Um, oh, when you say fire guy, do you mean the wonderful trap where you're heading down towards Grey Rat and there's a guy in a room full of barrels hucking firebombs at you? That's, which that's the guy, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I love that room. Like Some of the traps in this area are brilliant. Like I've laughed at them every time. Like I see what you're doing, video game. Well <laughs> I, will, I will say, though, that that room is a disappointment compared to... Uh, the stress test because that room was different Um, you walked into that room and there were a load of enemies in the next room like beyond the door where there's just the one guy that's facing the wall now Mm. there were enemies in that next room and there was one of the the incense guys that called them in but he was waiting behind the door so you would walk into that room you wouldn't see him 
and you'd hear a scream you'd be like where the fuck is that um and you've got enemies coming towards you anyway so you wouldn't know where it where it come from and it was only like the uh i think like the second or third time where i was going down there thinking like what was calling these through um that i actually saw it and I don't think that's a trick they really play until the catacombs, maybe. There's, uh, a where they... There's a couple in there, definitely. I've, I've been caught out from behind a couple of times. No, but I mean like like a, a kind of uh, a, a magic user that's hiding amongst the level, that's literally hiding behind the door. I can remember one in the catacombs particularly, mm. um, but they, they saved that trick, I think, until a little bit later on instead, mm. but I missed it. I missed it in that level. I must admit, because that that area was like a one of the standout moments for me in the in the stress mm-hmm. test. So if you if you then uh, if you then move across, you uh, see the rooftops, and you've got uh, another dead dragon beforehand, uh, but you've got uh, you've got the goop monster again. Yeah. Uh, potentially, mm-hmm. uh, but but it can't get up to you this time. So you can uh, firebomb it, or you can arrow it, or or do you? Just run past Did it. You just... You just run past it. You don't. You oh, can't use ladders. You're such a coward. You can't use ladders. It, it says Mr. Johnny shoots you from nine miles away. What? At least you I'm comfortable being comfortable little shed. I'm being pride. Just bring out like a deck chair. Yeah, you, you... <laughs> and like a a flask and put on like a knitted hanky on. Top. Like one of those people like... that go out looking for wildlife and they sit in their little tent with the with uh, being sort of camouflaged in and a thermos. I will. I will say that uh, if I was a big game hunter, I would still be taking animals down whereas you would just be running through the jungle <laughs> I'd be running through the jungle occasionally punching a deer <laughs> yeah <Aww. That's... laughs> yeah and, and on that bombshell <laughs> <coughs> so did 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 you uh, take on the goop monster at this point or did you run past it or the first time I took it on and I think I died and then after that I just ran past it mm-hmm because if you quit, you can take him out before he goes boop. Uh, you can yeah. just run in, goes boom, and he kind of like dies with a kind of a squish. Like yeah, yeah, but it's it's not it's not straight away that you figure that out. No, it's no, really no. Your first the, time, the... You, you, it pops. And I, I did try to fight it my first time, and he he battered me. And after that, I was like, nah, screw this. I either run up not... and hit him or just run on. Like no need. Because it's not the obvious one that pops as well. When you go the second time, you're thinking like, ah, oh, it's you, and it's not. It's the one behind it. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's the standard boring ones, isn't it? So you've then got a, a little tiny sort of crystal lizard that will drop you stuff from there. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a variation that you can go round from here, mm-hmm. but there's a uh, there's another night and there's a, a room full of probably the biggest mass of enemies that you've that you've had in a while. There's an axe guy. There's a halberd guy. Oh, that room's um, hard. You've got the, yeah. the the two the two dogs. You've got regular enemies, and it's on multiple levels as well mm. but uh, there is some good stuff in that room like, oh definitely mm. <laughs> you can pick up an Astora straight sword in that room yes um, I'd like just let's just take a minute here just to, just to, do you know I, I looked on the, the wiki right and the, this first level gives you fully 10 10 equipable items like armors not armors sorry weapons and shields you can use at this point let's Ten. let's take a moment to, to pause at this Ten. point then read uh, have you got them to hand yeah, I've written them down mate Right, so um, let's read out the items. Okay. And, uh... In this first area, you can find all right. You can find a longbow. You can find the, the deep battle axe. Uh, you can I've find. Used it. You can find a broadsword. Mm. You can find a rapier. Uh, you can find a mail breaker, which is kind of a short stabby sword. Uh, you can find a lucerne, which is a big halberd type thing. Uh, you can find a claymore, which is a big sodding sword. Uh, you can find the astora straight sword, which is pretty pretty good. Um, you can find the Silver Eagle Kite Shield, which is one of the, the sort of 100% defense shields that lets you do yes, your weapon shield. Yes, indeed. And yes, you can yes, find yes. a club. And you can find a club. And that's a lot of options in the first area. That's like one from every one of the classes that would work really well with one of the classes. Yeah. Like if you pick one, your Dex guy, you could pick the Rapier. If you're going Strength, you could go for the Claymore or the Lucerne, maybe. Like, there's loads of options there. One of the things I, I learned from... Uh, I love Jessica... No, it wasn't I love Jessica Wheel. It was... Um, uh, true talent on on Twitch was that if you put uh, a rapier in your left hand rather than a shield, if an enemy comes to, towards you, you can literally like stab, 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 and stagger them 
mm. and then smash in with with your your right handed weapon. And often the rapier actually works better as a as a defensive, like a proactive defense, as as daft as it may sound, mm. than waiting to put up your shield and take a, a, a clank on it potentially, and then throw the um, uh, throw the right handed weapon. Plus in uh, in Dark Souls two, if you imbued the rapier with poison you could then start ticking people down if you had got a, a an aggressive enemy and you know become mm. more defensive after you'd after you poison them and you'd stagger them so it's a it's a good weapon to uh to maybe think of using instead of a shield but mm. but yeah like like options loads of options right at the start and they're all reasonable ish stats as well so you could feasibly get a hold of them like Anything like a couple of stats and strength, and there you go, boom! You can use the claymore. Well done. Did you change your your weapons at all, Kylie? Through uh, through the level, or have you tried different <coughs> stuff beyond the the ones that you started with? Um, I think I pretty much stuck with the is it the broadsword mm-hmm. around that area, and then it wasn't until uh, the third boss that I got my new weapon, which mm-hmm. I showed uh, you, Paddy. Mm. Pokey poke. <laughs> yes. So yeah. The poke um, stick. Um, th- those yeah, are my I, main do two. You find that, do you find that you're using your your first weapon like all the way? Because I I've finished the game now for those counting, uh, and I use the standard cell sword twin blades for the entire game. Wow. And they were brilliant, and I upgraded them to sharp later on as well, which improves the deck scaling even better, which is wonderful. You can make a club into a dex weapon now. I love that. I love that. <laughs> It's so stupid. Um, like, look at I think it's a really you, sharp bit of wood. If you if you choose the Firestone as as your opening gift, mm. that that's a, an extra kick on as well. Because <laughs> on my on my first character, I I got um, I got a flaming club, ladies. Um, <laughs> Enjoy. Um, yeah, and if you mix that's it up with a torch you. in the other hand as well, it's like these sticks are on fire. <laughs> oh come on! Um, no, but, but but that that does you give you extra impetus once you um once you apply it because that I I think that's definitely a an easy way of going through the level. But mm. um, even on top of uh, the weapons as well, the one thing I will say which was a drop from this level, which I think is amazing, is the the Lothric armor. Um. Not just the, uh, I mean, it's it's mainly the chest piece that I've been I've been using the Lothric mm. Knight armor, but the way that the the cloak looks when it's embered is yeah. just beautiful. The way it shimmers and the, the way the kind of the burn moves through it may well be uh, one of my favorite knight armors that I've that I've seen in in all of the games. It looks gorgeous. Just a shame that it's worn by such a bastard. Well, don't talk to me like that. We've had this podcast ooh, for years. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Low blow. Um, but like when you, so when you jump, uh, so so moving about this, so when you jump down off of the uh, the roof with the uh, snake man, uh, I feel, I still think of them as snake oil men, not not these pus things. Um, so that you meet your first spear knight down there as well, don't you? Yeah. 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 You, you jump down and you turn around and go back inside uh, underneath oh, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, you meet your first uh, shield and spear guy, which I found actually gave me more bother than the sword guys. What about you guys? Like, did you find you, the spear well, guy you've worse? Got, you've got knight galore at this point because you've got. Hmm. Um, if you drop down, you've got the uh, sort of John Candy knight, the the chunky lad with the halberd, who's sort of doing like laps around uh, a bonfire. The winged knight. I'd, and then, um, if you like, that's what it's called. And then, if you if you move on, you've got your your regular short sword guys again with the with the small shields. Then you've got that bastard with a with a large shield. Um, and you've also a little bit further on, you've got your first red eye guy, the blue, uh, yeah, garbed. blue cloak, blue cloak lad, yeah. Right, that blue cloak lad. Uh, I've written more of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he wrecked me over and over and over I just couldn't put it together he seems to have infinite stamina in the, in the same way as you know when uh, those worshippers earlier on if you hit them they've, they've got like this this degree of just before they start attacking you with a knife they've got the uh, this degree of a, oh doing something 
uh, about them. <laughs> and unlike this, this guy sort of when uh, he's presumably looking at fallen comrades or something, there's a point where he turns around and he's like, I am going to fucking lay you out. <laughs> and you see those that wonderful uh, graphical effect where the eyes turn and there's almost that, that sort of sparkler tracer effect that follows the mm. eyes round. And he looks pissed anyway, even before he starts applying magic to his sword, <laughs> which is like, what? But yeah, how that guy, you... awful. I like to, how did you fare against the the blue-garbed one, Kylie? Yeah, died. <laughs> took, <laughs> took, a, took a few few attempts. Is this the part where if you go down the ladder straight away uh, in front of you, there's also a guy shooting you with uh, arrows? Or am I thinking of a different part? Oh, that's like this... no, we've, we've we've moved it. We've we've jumped a, that's, we've jumped over an area here. I think. Yeah. Yeah, because um, there's a doorway there, and there's quite a tough guy inside. And, Fat lad. Um, I don't, no, I, I, don't I think, think this is bad. one of the. This is the uh, the night that that's the one that leads you through to the room with like loads of enemies. Yeah. Um... Um, because there's a balcony on that that if the axe guy is on the balcony and you don't see him and you go into that room full of enemies, he will jump out and like smash you on. But you can see down to the chunky lad that's then wandering around the bonfire mm. from from there. Have you ever killed the chunky lad? Um, I killed him today. I went back and killed Ooh. him today. Other than that, I um, I but not, in him. Yeah. not in the main flow of it. Not in the main flow of it. No, I didn't. Same. I was like, you know what? Nah. I... In the stress, t- in the stress test, I firebombed him for a, from a roof. But as soon as I got arrows, God, you're the bravest like, man in the world, aren't you? Well, I'm I'm tactical, and you you you'll miss me in co-op. I just wanted if, to if uh, get to the boss at that point. I think. Um, mm. Wow. Because I was doing a. There's a little gap. If you go through the gap, go along, you can kind of drop down onto this bit of wood, and then if you lure him over with knives yeah. or whatever, you yeah. can do a jump attack on him. I was trying that for a while, but um, yeah, he was uh, hard, <laughs> quite hard at you, that point. You can go around the corner as well if you leave his boss room, and he, the the chunky lad, will follow you probably more than any of the other knights. He will if you if you run out of that room and you go up some stairs that's where you've got a, a guy that's that's firing sort of flaming crossbows yeah, at you yeah. and you cut back up some stairs there's a, there's an item that Sorry. you can you can then get and you can <laughs> shut up of a guy throwing crossbows at you shut up get away from my you stairs can... you shut up <laughs> ginger ginger bastard it's got a large um, crossbow that shoots small crossbows yeah you see <laughs> Dragon's Den. No, sorry, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, so you can you can then go to uh, a ledge and then jump onto a bit of roof that will that will keep you safe. But he will run all the way up there and round uh, to try and twat you and run pretty much across all of the rest of that that level near to the boss if you piss him off. What a dick! Uh, I know, but he's wow. not really that difficult to kill. Just quite imposing, scary. Yeah. I think it's, it's the girl from one ending. He's a, he's, a, he's a big lad. Again, going back to the the guy with the uh, the the massive shield is the sod in this in in this area mm. because he's whereas I can run away from the blue guy and sort of take him from distance, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 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 guy with the massive shield is just an arsehole unless. Uh, you know he's he's turning away from you and he's given up on you, mm. which is rare. Um, so yeah. as you move to the area that's got those three or four red knights in, so you can go like right and you can go down towards the boss, or you can go through all those guys. Did you guys go through all of the red guys before realizing that it wasn't the way forwards? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. I got all the way through that. I was like, this isn't even. The- but I just oh, they they switch things up from the stress test though because <laughs> the, like the, the stre- way the, it is that it was the way forward in the stress oh, test. See, I never played it. I wouldn't know. It just it just felt right. It's like no, forward to the big castle. That looks like a boss. Because yeah. you see, if you've got if you've got the let's let's call it Boss Street. Boss Street. This, okay. This, this there, um, the uh, the boss that you as- accessed in the stress test was the boss that you can't get to straight away with this. Hmm. 
So is it the, um, the north end of Boss Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top end, mate. Top end, yeah. mate. Um, so did you um, go into that room once you'd beaten all the dudes? Yeah. Uh, I meet a lady. Yeah. Her name's Emma, which is lovely. And um, there was a time when I went back and I didn't defeat them and I kind of lured them over and they won't come in. No. They kind of just hover around the door. And I thought oh, okay. that was cool. I was like, why? Why won't you come in? Are you too fat? It's a, nice fat? Bit of <laughs> it's a really nice bit of leashing. They're like, nope, you stay outside. Nope, you're not coming in. You're mine. <laughs> Go away. Um, interesting fact in that room. If you equip a torch and run around and just smash up the furniture, that room will catch fire. Oh, what? cool. Burn it all. Sorry. That room will catch the <laughs> fucking fuck on I want to go back and set things on fire now. <laughs> no, because I saw a note on the floor that said torch. Torch ahead. Torch needed. And I'm like, right. Okay. Got my what? torch out. Nothing's going to happen. So I gave it a quick swipe. And then a sort of a chair sort of caught a little bit of fire. And then it started spreading up one of the columns. I was like, ooh. No. Ooh. And then I ran around and did it a bit more. And by the time I finished, I made a mistake. Does that, does that mean that... Uh, when you do encounter something else later on, yes, that that can be used as a weapon. Uh, I think it's just pretty. Oh, okay. But it still looks great. Like it looks amazing. Like, really, really good. Um, <laughs> so, so heading heading downwards from there. Whoa! Uh, what? Ba-ba-ba-ba. You've missed Why? something. Why? You've missed Why? You missed something. Said. So you go chat to the nice lady who tells you to go do stuff. Uh, you know, because this is a law podcast. She, you see a lady and she tells you to go do things. Yeah. I didn't, but I didn't. For I didn't go reasons. to her. I I didn't go to her until after I defeated the boss. Oh no, I did. I did. I went in and I chatted to her, and she gives you your first covenant. That's right, okay. ladies and gentlemen. It's the best time of the show. It's covenant of the week. It's covenant of the week. <laughs> Thank you for the impromptu jingle. Thanks. Covenant of the week. Blue. <laughs> and uh, quite uh, interestingly, for our first for our first week. This is a covenant for the weak, as in opposed to the strong. The covenant you pick up is the Way of Blue. Uh, for those not in the know, the Way of Blue is a covenant aimed at helping out players who get invaded. Uh, when you get invaded by a red phantom, it will summon a blue sentinel, uh, someone else who has opted to join the blue sentinels, and they will come and help you with your invader. So it's a covenant for those who hate invaders and want some help. Hold on, doesn't doesn't the the guy in Firelink give you that one? Nope. Are you sure? Very sure. I got it from her. Because I thought he gives you the the one where you can call in Blue Sentinels, and that she gives you the one where you can become a Blue Sentinel. No, no, no. I'm, it's the one you get from her. I'm certain of it. So, so what does the what does the guy in uh, Firelink give you then? Because uh... he tried, in, in Dark Souls. Two, he gave you the uh, the ability to call in blue sentinels. And mm. I thought he did the same here. I think I don't know what he gives you. I can't remember what it is. I think it's just you know misery and <laughs> funny words. Um, no, I'm, sh- I'm sure he. It, it, I know he gives you an emote, doesn't he? Gives but, you an emote. Yeah, no, you definitely get this at her. Like that's where okay. I got it anyway. I don't know if there's a thing there, but you definitely, definitely get okay. it at her. In, in case that's wrong, Twitter hashtag blame Paddy. <laughs> Um, no pressure. No, you, don't get it, you don't get it from Hawkwood, you get it from her. Um, so, yeah, and interestingly enough, uh, this time in Dark Souls 3, this covenant, right, get this, works. Okay. Right? So previously, you'd join the Way of Blue when you started Dark Souls 2, and you run around and you get invaded, and no one comes to help you, and you get invaded, and no one comes to help you, and you get invaded again, and guess what? No one comes to help you. Um, this time, I've been invaded, ooh, I would argue six or seven times. Uh, across mm. my playthrough I wasn't embedded an awful lot uh, five of those times I had a sentinel come in and help me Okay, which is amazing it takes a, a little minute for them to turn up it's not immediate so the two don't turn up at once like one will turn up the invader will show up and then if you can survive mm. for like 30-40 seconds then the next person will show up as well but like it it worked it bloody works mm. okay. See, have you uh, have you been a blue a, a blue sentinel as well not yet or no no I've, I've way of blued quite okay. a bit uh, I've had it on as a if I've not really been because in the early game I wasn't really co-oping a lot I wasn't summoning I wasn't doing anything I was just kind of hanging out you know just hanging out um, and it was quite a handy one to have on you know as, a, as another safety net as a if I do get invaded I'd like them to 
I'd like to have a bit of a fighting chance because I'm not very good at PvP. Like, I'm not very good at it at all. Like, I get smashed. I've had a few lucky moments as we did the other night, but like, usually I get smashed. So, like, you know, it's nice to see the way of Blue Covenant actually working for once. Um, did either of you two guys use it at all? Um, I equipped it, but to be honest, it wasn't until we first co op CJ that I actually hmm. turned on the online function because I yeah, wanted I remember, yeah. to I wanted to just get used to the game and, and not have to deal with invasions or anything at that point. But hmm. since then I have left it on but I'm not with that uh, covenant anymore. Hmm. So yeah, I haven't experienced I think that. online on is the way to go. It it's funnier. Like Oh yeah, it's quite thrilling though. I mean, especially when we were all co oping yesterday and, and those uh that, that guy came in, clearly outnumbered, and then, oh, wait, there's another one! And yep. it was yeah, really that, tense. That was, that, was the, that was one of the best moments I've had playing this game, honestly, mm. because it was just... Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd said on Twitter that it's it's almost like a, um, a really tense survival horror game when you're on your own, but when you're playing in co-op, it becomes like a massive laugh, and it becomes like you, you're a posse, you're a gang. Yeah. And that was yeah. the first point where it was like, oh, somebody's coming to have a go at us, and then it's like, Oh, somebody else has joined in, and it was it was so much fun. Can I had three different yeah. colours going the other day, three different colours. Oh wow! Yeah, I had a purple and a red, and it was me. Uh, and the purple started attacking the red. It was amazing. Oh yeah, because that's the you, can do I, you, you, you see, I didn't click on to this this mad covenant mm. that they were they could they could be both. I'm sure I remember. I'm sure I mentioned it initially in yeah. the in the one where I named them the Vimped Bros. Vimped bros. Um, <laughs> the Mad yeah. Covenant are mad. They're brilliant, and we'll go into more into those next week on Covenant of the Week, shall we? Covenant of the Week. Uh, yeah, I did with Co- with Covenant. I didn't know that you had to <laughs> equip a Covenant until much much later. Oh wow! I didn't realize. I didn't realize there was that slot in your inventory mm. for uh, for Covenants because. It it had always been a a ring in the past. So they've made it, it easier, but not for you. Then it, yeah. it is really easy. You can just switch out when you feel like. So you want to do a bit of invading. You haven't got to run away and you know find the NPC to change your covenant. You're just like, right, I'm just going to put a new badge on now. Yep, now I'm an invader. Yep. Have, have, have rings always added to your weight requirements, or is this a, a new thing Some here? Them. Some of them do. Yeah, we've always I, done I like yeah, yeah, yeah. Rings always worked for weight requirements. Well, I never, I've never kind of clicked onto that until now. Yeah, so. man. So anyway. Uh, if we go down past uh, the a guy with flaming crossbow, flaming crossbow, <laughs> you flaming crossbow. Uh, you've, got, you've got two of those arsehole shield guys, and then you've got uh, Vort of the Boreal Valley. Oh. See, I Ky- love the name. I think that's a wonderful name. Kylie, your first thought of Vort. Sexy beast. That's an awesome boss. <laughs> <laughs> to say, to say, like the the first boss battle made a really big impression on you. Yeah. Was this one of those moments where you went, you know, something? I'm in on this. Was this the point where you ordered Dark Souls too? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. This guy yeah. was so amazing. I was like, he just looks so freaking cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I can't remember how I dealt with him at first. I think I was going full um, shield and broadsword, but then I pretty much, I believe, I uh, dual wielded in the end to deal with okay. him because I felt like blocking was just. I wanted to be faster and I just wanted to dodge and get in there and lay into him. Um, mm. But I believe that I was doing the dual wielding wrong because I had. Um, one blade in one hand and a different weapon in the other rather than pressing okay. the triangle button. So like people yeah. on my video were like, oh, by the way, you've done that a bit wrong. And I was like, oh, but I won, I guess. So <laughs> it's <laughs> all right. Yeah, you just, if, you, if you dual hand something, it unlocks a few different weapons. But you, there's nothing to stop you dual wielding mm. with one in each hand. Um, yeah. Nothing to stop you. It's, it's not optimal, but it does work. So... The the intro to the to the boss is fantastic as well, where you go to to move uh, those vines away from the door that mm. are at the end, and then all of a sudden you turn round, and the the boss appears, and it's it, that that level of when he's walking in, he like smashes the the club down on the uh, on the ground is just mm. awesome, yeah. and then and then you know it's on like Donkey Kong, and the ground's just like so destroyed. Well, did you get nobbled by the uh, the frostbite? Yes, because <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, actually, on the boss fight video I did was the first time I tried to 
throw a firebomb on it and when he did it because uh-huh. i throw, threw it and you you kind of stepped forward and then i stepped into it and i took Ooh. so much damage and i was like let's not do that again <laughs> but yeah so that did get me though. actually do because i've still not worked it out because I presumed that once you once you frostbite was up, you were you, the boss had the ability to kind of one shot you that you were you would you were fragile at that point that you could be shattered. Um, that may well be completely wrong, but that was that was the thing that I I, I just I, I presumed. It. Um, okay, you take a small amount of damage and reduce your defense and stamina regen, so it makes you weaker, I guess, because you're okay. yeah, I... I definitely noticed the um, stamina being less for sure, but I didn't really notice much else mm. when I had it. So, what did you think of the the different phases of the boss? Because there's the point where he's he's rushing in and he's he's fighting you, and then there's a point where he goes mental. That see, I actually almost beat him the first time, and it was when he went mental. Um, I wasn't ready for that. I was like, whoa, because he just like charges you and just goes nuts. Oh man, I just wasn't ready, and that's what killed me. <laughs> Because <laughs> you, you you think that he's he's maybe going to have a charge and then revert back to something else, but he properly does it like about four or yeah, five yeah. times before he That's he it. calms down. That's what I wasn't ready for. I was like, oh, he'll do it about two two times, and then it was like, boom, dead. I was like, oh, but when you okay. when you nail that and and when when you know it's coming and you can nail it, it's like, ole, ole, ole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was doing the uh, the debrave thing and and just. I, I don't know if I got a kite shield at this point. I presume I must have done, but I think I at the at the end of it, I was I was still sort of jumping out of the way and sort of trying to smash him in his ass. Well, um, that's that's then, just Souls One Hundred and One. Get behind him, put <laughs> weapon in bum. I love the I love the thing where he, where he uh, he does the the frost breath though. It looks so good. Yeah, I like that. And the music the music again is fantastic in the boss fight. Mm. Uh, it's just and I. I it was one of those where I came back to redo this over and over again because it was a, a good way of, of building up souls for leveling. But it's a boss fight that I've not tired of. Still mm. now, I, I there's been points even recently where I've died at that boss fight, even though I know what I'm doing, just simply because I don't know if it's just me getting cocky or being a bit crap and stuff. But I still love that boss fight. He can catch you. He can definitely, definitely catch you. I mean, it took me six or seven goes to take this guy down as well I had troubles um, I think because I was using my, my cell sword weapons which is like sharp and slashy and he's made yeah. of armour and it was just kind of like not tinging off him but it's like this is not doing very well however pro tip if you can find yourself a lightning pine resin holy moly put that on there is one in the level isn't there yeah oh mercy yeah. the time I put that on uh, I had the whole thing done in probably 15 seconds no it was really? it was uber gank I put it on and That's I, a... I did my, my swooshy swooshy multiple sword hit thing and it's like oh there's a quarter of his health Huh. That's a very that's a very Dark Souls thing in it, in of itself because it um, in the first game before you get to um, the first boss on the first level Taurus. it gives you yeah. a yeah Taurus Demon it gives you like a, a, a lightning a pine resin which works yeah. really well and this is the same but yeah. you only get one as well it's like this is better count and like I'm glad it did mm. um, but real I mean I get real shades of like this is a Dark Souls first level. You've got a castle to run around in. You've got some evil, evil men. There's a dragon, and there's a big, strong guy who's a bit slow uh, at the end. Like this is Dark Souls 101 for a first level, I thought. But that's not a detriment, I don't think. I will say that like summoning was a bit a bit shite when I, I first first got it. So mm. this was something that I took on on my own. Yeah. And then when I was involved in <coughs> being summoned for this boss fight, mm. it lost a little bit of something. Hmm. Because it is a, a, a real challenge on your own, especially at first. But when you bring in other people in, it, it kind of loses the majesty because everybody's... The, 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 the boss doesn't know quite where to turn at times yeah. because everybody's boss coming in different directions. Yeah. 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 Although when he's looking at you and just you and you really, really, really need to do an Estus, but he won't stop looking at you. It's like, look yeah. at them. Look at them. They're here too. I always think it's funny when when uh, the boss runs up to you and he skids sort of sort of near you, and then you do an Estus right in front of his face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> troll along. That's awesome. I, have... I love it when he does when he does that sweep of kind of the the club as well, and the sparks come off the uh, off the the uh, the brickwork on the on the on the floor. Mm. I think it mm. always looks amazing. 
I'll tell you what also is fun if you're fighting with other people uh, with Vought is you can take a second to throw emotes at him which I like to do <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was playing with Jeremy earlier and, and I, was, I kept throwing in the, uh, the delightful here emote where you just yell which, which you overdid on co-op I last think night I yeah. underdid it yeah. no 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 no. I don't it's, think you could ever use it enough me. like here yeah! just... and I, like that's a really useful emote to use when you're it's... in co-oping with a stranger because I showed a guy where a bonfire was he kept trying to walk around many... like here here and he kept saying no like, here and he finally came over and I pointed and then he gave me a little clap I, I think I think that's that's a real you thing yep. and I think you should maybe 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 write that in your journal and, and say to maybe have a conversation with yourself about it but don't mention it again <laughs> I write it down in my journal I love you which ideally which incidentally <laughs> is right here oh, <laughs> yeah. shocking so so after uh, Vought is dead like I say you can you can lay down summon signs from here but I think it was always really weird when I'd laid down a sign to be summoned into the Vought boss but there were people coming down from the frigid, da- well, as she was originally called, the frigid dance of the Boreal Valley, and there were people taking me up to a boss fight that I I wasn't good enough to do. She loosened up a bit now, and she may be, may well have. <laughs> it's a shame they've lost they've lost that bit because uh, obviously vort has got the um, uh, the frostbite attack, and I, mm. I really liked the the language of the frigid dancer of the Boreal Valley, um, but. Yeah, I always think it's really weird to summon people that uh, that have got their their signs outside of that boss gate to then take them up to a fight, which they'll probably die in. Mm, that seems it stupid. just seems it just seems weird. Although it is, I, I don't know the true context, and I presume we'll we'll come back to that in uh, in good time. But uh, um, it's Kylie. Have you have you faced her yet? Who's that? The the uh, the, the, the dancer. dancer of the Boreal Valley. No, you'd, you'd know if you, you had. Yeah, you would know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. basically where where we co opt last night is as far as I've got. Okay, Paddy, so oh. yeah, because there's because there's if you if you lay down a summon sign, um, outside of Vort, there's a good chance that the cathedral that you were in where you met the the lady Emma will will be a boss fight. Uh, uh, okay. So, and it's it's amazing. I think you'll love it. But I die so quickly in there mm-hmm. i'm just not good enough for it but so um the the lady in the cathedral will also give you a banner yeah and once you've uh once you've gotten through those doors a what do you think of the of the vista once you got through the doors and the the kind of closing moment that that takes you through to the next level oh where those things crawl up yeah, hmm. they were they were horrible, but but you know they helped me out, so it's all good. <laughs> but that was pretty cool what? putting putting the flag up and that, and and flying over, and then landing in this new area. And I was I took a moment to take it all in, and I was like, "Yep, come on, let's go." <laughs> I'd love it if the, if that was part of the the NPC dialogue in that cathedral. Like, I'll give you this banner. We're like, what's this for? Put that flag up and that. <laughs> yeah, just just yeah, put right it up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks. You've really, you've really took the uh, the the ponce and the sting out of that opening, <laughs> <laughs> of that opening moment. And why did you say that in the first place? Honestly, I mean, I've got to say though that the the bit where the the gargoyles come and pick you up and take you down, it's like I think that's the probably the second big Dark Souls one callback after Andre, isn't it? Yeah, you were you were more fussed with that oh, than, than I was. I was for, so for excited. Me, I was like, I know who for, you are. For me, it was it was just kind of I was like, oh okay, it, it didn't hit me in a big way mm. that but the, the thing that hit me more than that was the vista that I saw when I walked through those doors because it was mm. just like oh I am this high up yeah and you know you see started surveying sort of the va- the valley yeah. and the landscape all around and there was this real sense of I'm I'm going to go to there and I'm going to go there and what's that down there and as as you go through the game as well this that real sense of almost not realizing how much vertigo you had at the start, and almost this delayed vertigo where you sort of you get further down into the, into the into the level, and you look up and you're like, "Fuck, I was up there." Yeah, that I, I love that. That's a a real real sense of majesty for me. But, uh, so so what at 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 this point, obviously we've uh, we've all played a little bit further than this. Yeah. Um, Kylie and I are at 
similar places in our games, but Pads finished it. What do you what do you make of the game sort of thus far and uh, Kylie and how's it uh, I don't know challenge preconceptions or um, how hooked or fascinated would you would you say you are? really really enjoying it i'm enjoying looking at the various items and things i'm picking up and reading about them i'm starting to get more into that kind of thing uh, to do with the game and into the lore and stuff mm. um but yeah i think i mean as i said earlier i was a bit worried about how hard it's going to be and yes it is a challenge but I've really enjoyed that challenge and it is mm. again the monster hunter feeling of overcoming something for the first time and going yes okay I can actually do this but then facing something else that's a challenge but then working to overcome that and it's such a cool feeling I just it's as you said there's moments in the game where you look around and you're like oh I can go over there and it just looks so beautiful and it's so easy to get lost in this world and it's again one of the reasons why I knew I had to buy this game because I was like I'm definitely going to get lost in this and I just need to overcome that barrier and uh, it just seems to have happened now and I'm really glad because I'm super excited to play the second game as well um, and just to touch back on those creatures that crawled up and carried me mm. over, I, I was a little concerned because I thought, surely they're not going to fight me. This isn't going to be a fight <laughs> after, after this after this boss. I'm not going to have to have another fight, am I? But yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a real feeling within uh, the, the landscapes and vistas that you get where I always, I always compare it to like being a little kid in the summer holidays and sort of going wandering around away from the house and you know finding different villages or big fields or like oh what's down there oh I'm getting quite a long way from home will I be able to find my way back or like you know uh, I, it's getting a bit dark oh man I'll be in trouble when I get home and there's that real feeling of sort of excitement and trepidation at the same time and I, I it reduces me to that that childlike quality of feeling very seeing somewhere and just going like oh what's over there but also feeling genuinely nervous yeah. as to what's over there and what what could be around and uh i swear i attune to, to to sound and noises in this game <laughs> so much like trying to figure out what's where and and how far it is from me uh god with your sound bar that must be that must be pretty <laughs> terrifying yeah. you're like what definitely uh, Especially if you you know you play it in the dark and like the the rest of the w- room just sort of disappears. That's that's the point where you know say what you want about VR, but that's the point where I'm like, there's a window into a world and the rest of the world, you know the the rest of the real, if you will, just um, just blurs away. Um, I I actually really enjoy playing it at my boyfriend's house because he's got surround sound. Uh-huh. So <gasps> oh wow <laughs> yeah, so it's like. Ooh. Wow, this is so awesome. <laughs> that must be as fascinating as it is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is your boyfriend playing it as well, or is he sort of happy to kind of watch on and, and, and see, you know, chip into comments on the world or or um, watch, watch as you play it? Yeah, he's basically just watching me play it, and then he'll go, mm. oh, watch out. You know, if he notices something I don't like, an enemy sneaking up behind me or a shiny somewhere, he'll be like, oh, there, you know. He wants to get a laser pointer so he can, so he can point right to the screen. And I was like, no, that's taking it a bit too far. Just tell me where where it is. But yeah, he's really enjoying it. I don't think he would play it himself, but he likes mm. watching me play it. So what tempted you to put the the boss battles up on, you, on your YouTube channel? Because they seem to have done quite well as well. I mean, we've, we've retweeted them from the uh, Twin Humanities twitter a few times and but thank you uh, and 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 that's all right but i know that when uh, i first saw they they'd gone up they'd already got a, a pretty healthy amount of views before uh in you know in like the the opening sort of few days and stuff which was really cool well to be honest a lot of my viewers have been asking me to play dark souls for a long time and uh-huh. it's just a case of uh, I'm doing so much at the moment I can't justify doing like a complete let's play but that said using the you know PS4 share feature it's just easy just to hit, hit that button before the fight yeah. go in finish it and then and then hit it again and upload and it's not taking me any extra time to do that so I thought yeah I'm, I may as well do it and uh, 
a lot of them seem to be happy with that because they've wanted it for quite some time and they're finding mm. it interesting to see how I'm approaching these bosses considering it's my first pro proper uh, Dark Souls game so mm -hmm. I think I think it's it, it's a game that's kind of one for you as well that even though you're putting up the, the boss fights that they there's this sort of personal pleasure that you've got of you know exploring this at your own pace and not having to comment over it or think about that side of things that you can just lose yourself in it as you know something that's 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 purely yours i guess yeah that's definitely what i wanted with this with it being mm. the first one that i'm gonna play i was like mm, i don't really want to do a let's play to be honest i want to just play mm. this for me and um because like the problem with doing let's play sometimes is it can be difficult to um you know absorb all the information sometimes Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I struggle with, so I might forget things or, or you know, not pay attention to something or something like that. So with this, I was like, no, I want to stay focused um, and get really immersed, and I don't want to record too much of this. So mm -hmm. that was another reason why. We did get a a, a, a touch of, uh, of feedback on this as well because we we asked we asked quite late. As to uh, as to what people sort of thought of uh, this, and had a, a few tickles back from sexy people, just the sexy people. <laughs> um, the the first of these, uh, Josh Crow at Morbid Beard, uh, said, great. Oh, Patrick, Nothing. you're so hip and deaf and fresh. <laughs> but Josh, Josh said and rad. Uh, Josh said, uh, great opening area, full of intrigue and a massive fucking dragon. Yeah, I preferred it. I preferred it to Forest of the Fallen Giants. Ooh. Interesting. Dirty bitch. Um, and then he said, it gives you the traditional fodder to practice on and some really tough enemies for an opening area. Looks gorgeous too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Janos at Playful Wolf on Twitter said, uh, that first step out into the light and you can see the city spread out before you gave me goosebumps. I remember poring over every de detail I could see, trying to tease out what I was going to be facing in the coming hours. <laughs> That that background vista in it, in of itself, the kind of you know the 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 blurred lighter sort of city in, uh, beyond the walls just makes it when you do focus on it, it makes it things feel far more claustrophobic than it it is if you if you just kind of consider there's a sun in the sky because it's it's so yellow and so bright. But <laughs> do you, you know what I mean though, because it is so imposing the city in the distance. So yes, uh, then we had uh, Alex uh, Fusil, is it? Fusile? Fusile. Yes, Alabaster Mage said, uh, as an area, High Wall seems a bit underwhelming. While it has some great surprises, overall I felt uh, slightly old hat. Hmm. Don't want to see if I seem overly negative. It sprawled outwards a fair way. And maybe think back to Boletaria from Demon Souls, uh, which is always a good thing. Uh, I can see the Boletaria thing because that first that opening level of Demon Souls is just insanely good. Like you say, like we were saying, like the first level of a Souls game is usually a big castle, isn't it, of some description? So know, one, one, of the one of the criticisms of the of the game has been kind of in many ways that it's a it can be a little bit Souls greatest hits, but I'm not I'm not adverse to that, especially considering how Dark Souls two pretty much did a completely different story with maybe a, a the odd nudge and wink here and there so yes mm. but yes mm. so uh marvelous so uh yes we shall close things up if uh kylie would you like to plug your marvelous youtube channel yes you can come and subscribe to my youtube channel which is gadget girl kylie i've also got twitter as well which is by the same name Muck marvellous and it is awesome also check out that Soul Sacrifice Delta playthrough because it is amazing proper awesome proper. game there's actually I've done over um, 300 videos I think yeah that. yeah all together Man. across what? Soul Sacrifice and Delta <laughs> dedication such a yeah <laughs> such a good game so yes we uh, the next time we shall uh, what's what's the level of this I forgot what it's called the Undead Settlement Undead isn't Settlement it? we're going to settle yeah. in the settlement we shall we shall have a monkey into into that next time. Thank you very much for joining us again, Kylie, because it's been proper good natter, and I've had I've had a good day at work today, and I think a lot of that is following on from the massive laugh that we had on on co-op stuff last night. So uh, 
So thank you for your part in that as well. Well, thank you very much for having me on. And uh, of course, I'm always up for more co-op as well. With both yes, of you. seems good. <laughs> you have my stick with nails. So And your chin. <laughs> in the... <laughs> <laughs> People have to see this character. But yes, in the, in the immortal... Immortal words of uh, of Grey Rat. Good goodbye and and stay safe. You can you can all all join in if you want to. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stay safe. <laughs>